<laughs> um, good, good, good. All right, we are recording, my friend. Okay. Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Um, this is Burn the Ship. The goal of Burn the Ship is to connect entrepreneurs with professionals that can help you go all in on your business, people that have walked the walk, talked the talk, done all the business things that we all aspire to be doing in the future. Um, and there's not a lot of places to learn how to do it. So hopefully Burn the Ship is that hub for you. If there's anyone that you want us to reach out to specifically, please let me know. Message me. Put it in the YouTube comments. Uh, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I am excited about this one. This is a good one because I think that um, your business and the scale and the way that you grow your business is a little bit abnormal compared to the people that we typically have on the podcast. Um, the people that we network with are usually one business individuals, um, sometimes solopreneurs, built their business from the grounds up and, and very grassroots and slowly and steadily. And uh, it seems to me you have approached things a little bit different. Um, with your really the knowledge of of you know your own money and other people's money you can do great things and there are not a lot of people out there teaching that except for when you pay for a really expensive ticket for that information so <laughs> hopefully we can bottle some of that up and teach a little bit to the people that are listening today why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your business awesome bailey thanks for having me so uh my name is casey ridley um i am the founder and president of a company called the designery it's a kitchen bath closet um, company and uh, I also own several other companies and, and do a lot of different things. Um, so it has been a, a chaotic, fun, and stressful ride all along. Yeah, how long has the ride been? Like uh, four years, right? Yeah, yeah, just just a few years. Um, so I kind of started back in 2019 when I uh, bought this company um, from my uncle, and and we can go kind of into some of the details of that. Sure, tell um, me a story. Start from wherever you want. Absolutely. So I mean, I guess I'll start from the beginning. So. Um, when growing up, you know, I was I was around the the family business. It was uh, called you know A one surplus where it started out, and uh, it was what you expect with a surplus or salvage company. It was you know broken windows, broken doors, um, you know just a bunch of junk kind of hanging around, and uh, it was a very interesting time to say the least. Um, but I learned a lot about the foundation of business, about you know lean startups, um, you know how to take take uh, you know control of uh, you know situations that might arise in business, good or bad, and um, had a lot of you know real life experience there. Um, so after that, I had no idea I wanted to go into business. I you know you know continued my own life, went on to University of Georgia. So I'm a big dogs fan. As, yep, go uh, dogs! Yeah, we've learned. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people around here are so. Mm. Um, as they should be absolutely <laughs> you know uh so i went to school under uh at pre-med and i was there for a few years and i was in organic chemistry and just realized it was not for me i very <laughs> quickly uh you know left and i went to my counselor and said all right what else is out there and i kind of stumbled into business um i found my passion from there though <laughs> it was it was a wild journey in college with business and I loved every bit of it, um, from you know different patents throughout school, different startups, um, just different you know accelerators. It was it was a lot of fun, and I just found a love and passion for it. So fast forward a couple years from there, I was graduating, didn't know what was next, you know, corporate job, you know, what is it? And I just knew that I wasn't built to go work at a corporate um, company. I just wasn't built for that kind of lifestyle. Um, and it just wasn't something that was of interest to me. So I started looking around and around the same time, my uncle uh, wanted to retire and I knew that he had the right foundation there, but he didn't have the drive at his you know, point in life to kind of continue that build and you know, take it to the next level. And but I felt that the company was ready for that. Um, it just needed, you know, some different um, aspects and some different business model changes. So I uh, was hoping to get the friends and family discount and that didn't happen. <laughs> so bought the company and uh, from there expanded it, you know, after that and to a couple different corporate locations, went into franchising, have expanded past that and just continued building my career from there. Congratulations, my friend. And for the record, Georgia makes entrepreneurs too. Um, UGA <laughs> does. Not all Georgia Tech. We're, we're a diverse group of colleges around here, and we all do really, really good things, but we're all in the business world. So your, your Georgia Tech incubators um, and the, mm -hmm. the lack of participation from us does not scare us, for the record. So, <laughs> uh, But congratulations. That's a very, very cool story. Thank you. Thank um, you. So tell me a little bit, kind of how, as you're walking into the – after the acquisition of the business, right? Like what were you working with and kind of what were your short-term goals? 
Yeah. So, I mean, short term goals were, were obviously just to increase profitability, raise revenue, um, increase customer satisfaction. Um, you know, they, there was some turnover at the time. There was, you know, some, some difficult employees who had kind of been bred into a, you know, culture that was just probably not the best and, and it didn't uh, position the company ready for scale because of some of those things. So when, you know, I came in along with my brother and we came in together, um, we, you know, started looking at those aspects and, you know, started changing things. And, uh, you know, I'll say that there was a lot of pushback, you know, a lot of employees and don't like change, sure. especially when there's new people coming in, especially, especially when they're bad habits, usually bad yeah. habits tend to benefit the, the lack of productivity of the employees and themselves. So absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there were habits left and right that, that had to be broken and that's not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, especially, you know, if there's any young entrepreneurs out there, I mean, they know, you know, there's a, there's a stereotype on being young. It, it, it's hard to overcome sometimes. Um, and that lack of experience and uh, that youngness can be a, um, you know, factor that holds people back a lot of times. And so I had to overcome those things, right? I had to, you know, come into a business where I had a lot of, you know, perspectives that were probably not favorite, um, didn't favor me very well. And uh, I had to overcome that. And it wasn't always easy. It was, you know, difficult at times. Um, but, you know, here we are. Yeah, here we are. And so as you're like, how long between acquisition to, cause it was one location when you bought it. Right? Yeah, it was one location. How long to, to your mind flips to the, the, you know, setting of the processes in a way where you can begin to think about mm -hmm. franchising. So it took a couple years. So, you know, step one was I knew that I wanted to expand. I knew I wanted to scale, but of course I had to get the initial part of the company in the right position. Um, that took about a year to do that. Once after a year went by, um, brother and I sat down and we're like, all right, we need to expand. Let's do a second location. So we did. We opened up our second location and um, started growing from there. Um, I'll never forget it, actually. So I didn't have the idea of franchising at this point, right? I was just growing the company, trying to make more revenue, trying to make more profit, and ultimately, you know, satisfy our customers out in the industry. And while I was, it was New Year's Eve, um, I was visiting my fiance's grandparents in uh, Naples, Florida. Nice. And uh, I'll just never forget that I wanted to grow so badly and wanted to create this national brand, but finding good people in different cities that it was hard to manage, it was just not an easy thing to do. And so I kind of came across this, this model of franchising and it opened me up to a world that I just didn't really knew existed and it was always there. You know, but I guess for me, I always thought of fast food as, as the franchise industry. Mm -hmm. I never thought of, you know, many other things like the NFL is a franchise, right? Service industries. Um, I mean, the, the list goes on of different types of franchises that are out there. And when I realized that, I realized that we had a company that was um, perfect for the industry to franchise. And that was a great way to get like minded individuals who could help build their business. Um, but we could do it together with under the franchise model. Um, so about probably it took a year from there to get all the building blocks in place. Sure. And so as you get the building blocks in place, you've kind of got that ironed out the idea of the franchising model. What was going really well at that point? Like what, what would you say, like your skill that was allowing you to scale up and increase probability, increase revenue, mm -hmm. make changes in personnel and still sustain the growth that you were experiencing? What would you say that was like the biggest learning curve for you? Yeah, absolutely. So let me jump to the learning curve part because I think that that's sure. probably going to resonate with a lot of people. But um, and it's probably a different take on what, you know, a lot of people would probably answer with that question. Um, but for me, it was leadership. So, you know, I went to school and I would say that I got a great education, um, had good mentors around me that taught me a lot of things. And so I had kind of the knowledge and the um, expertise to go into business and do what I wanted to do. And I didn't realize that I didn't have the leadership skills. I didn't have the management skills. I didn't have those things because I lacked a lot of life experience because I was young. Right. I was young going into the business and um, I. I had to overcome that, right? And so I had to, you know, go back to the foundational building blocks of what it takes to be a good leader. And, and that's culture. Um, it's, you know, empathy and understanding with, with your workforce. Um, and then realizing that, you know, as a leader, you're not over anyone. Um, you're working alongside them, building something great. Um, but it is your responsibility to lead them in the right direction and guide them um, along that path that, that you're creating. So, 
when I realized those things, it allowed me to, you know, take that weakness that I had and really, you know, change that and, and make that one of my strengths now. Um, at that time, though, some of my strengths that I probably had that was that was going well was an understanding of the business. I understood the product. I understood the industry. I understood our differentiators and our competitive advantage. Um, I understood how to create something that of value to the customer and, and how to really expand upon that to the customer, different than how a lot of other companies in the industry were. Um, and then I just felt like there was a gap in the industry. And you know, specifically like in the kitchen and bath space, um, when you're working with cabinets, you know, there's just a gap between cost and custom and lead times to, you know, poor quality, big box stores mm -hmm. and so on. And there was a way to mesh those things together to kind of bring that in to a different perspective for the buyer to where they didn't have to sacrifice some of those things. And uh, so I, I had those things going well. I had the business side of it well, and uh, I had to work on the other side. Sure. And so, like, where are you right now, and what are the goals for you know the rest of the rest of this year, moving into next year? All like, what's your short term goals? What are some of the long term goals? Well, definitely goal wise, you know, I, I definitely want to expand. Right. I mean. You know, to kind of give you a little update on, on where we're at in our franchising journey. So we have, um, you know, two corporate locations um, and then we have um, another six franchise locations. So we're in, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, the Carolinas, Pennsylvania, Texas, um, and uh, a few more definitely that are coming um, that aren't quite released to the public yet. And uh, but very exciting times. So my short term goals is to continue that. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a national brand. I have no doubt about it. Um, you know, we are a part of a platform called Homefront Brands, um, where like-minded companies come together to share resources and data, and it allows us to create a stronger offering for our cu customers. Um, and we want to expand that, right? We want to have, you know, multiple locations and make that a national brand, and, and that's what we're doing. Um, so that's a short-term and a long-term goal. You know, I mean, we're going to, you know, continue opening up another 10 to 15 locations over the next year, um, but we do plan on, you know, another 30 or 40 in the next, you know, year and, or two after that. So, sure. um, you know, expansion is, is, is the plan, and then just continually, you know, helping customers and, and being out in the industries to bring our product to different cities around the United States. Sure. Explain um, Homefront to me a little bit, like, because what comes to my mind is kind of like neighborly. Are yeah. you familiar with neighborly? Yes, absolutely. Is it similar? It is. It is. So it's very similar. Um, you know, Homefront, it was started with uh, from a guy named Jeff Duden. Um, Jeff is a entrepreneur that started a company called Advanaclean, grew it to, I think, 250 some odd locations. Um, he was on Undercover Boss, very influential guy, just just awesome, great mentor and friend of mine. Um, he sold that company and then he created what he you know called Homefront Brands. Um, uh, the, the designery or A1 Kitchen Bath at the time was one of the first companies to kind of enter into this, this platform with Jeff. And uh, we just saw a lot of value in kind of that, that platform ideology and what was being built. And basically it's a service industry um, platform where companies come in um, to it and uh, we share resources like I said we're sharing data um, and ultimately we're creating um, not just one brand but multiple brands that are more powerful than one brand could be together it's very similar than, uh, to neighborly um, you know but we, we we obviously have different cultures different values different things that you know we hold a little bit more um, closer to heart than other companies or other platforms may do and uh, we believe that's what makes us a, you know, successful and responsible franchised organization. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, that that's kind of the definition of of what you want from a franchise organization as well is because you guys get paid whenever everybody else gets paid. You right. Know what I mean, yeah. I feel like the um, at some point, at some scale, some of those companies begin to leverage brand recognition so much in their value proposition mm -hmm. that they kind of lose some of their oomph. You know, mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't seem like that's the case here. So that's really, really unique. You're, you're creating co a community, not a list. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which is which is very, very unique. So that is cool. Um, it seems like an excellent solution for for your 
um, industry specifically, do you guys have plans to, I mean, obviously it's not your thing, but it's there, there's plans obviously to, to add other franchise organizations to that and continue to kind of develop that, that suite of people that are working together? Absolutely. I mean, we definitely want to grow that and have more brands, you know, under home front. It's, it's an important um, thing to, you know, continue putting home front at the top of the map and to continue growing that. Um, so, so absolutely, you know, we have a kind of saying with franchising and it's uh, that you're not in business or you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And that's exactly what it is talking about the network and, and the family. Um, that's really what it is we're building, right? We want, you know, people who want to take entrepreneurship by the horns and, and want to run with it, you know, but maybe they're scared about taking that leap of faith. They don't exactly know where to start. Um, that's what franchising gives you. It gives you a playbook to help you execute your business and then know that you're not alone. You have people to call, you have people to help, you have support uh, every step of the way. Um, and so, you know, we definitely want to, you know, continue with that journey or rather that's adding more brands. Um, and definitely adding a lot more locations with our brands, um, you know, specifically the, the designery, of course, for me. But, sure. um, you know, every all the brands that, you know, we support or that uh, is under home front. I mean, it's it's a family there, too. I mean, all of the leaders of those other brands and the presidents, I mean, they were a phone call away. We're yeah. all working together. We and all when they talk. add to their brand, it's good for you, too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a synergistic relationship. I mean, it's what franchising is, right? Like sure. you said, we make money when they make money. So what do we all want to do? make money so, absolutely you know you can't go wrong there sure well that is interesting my friend i'm interested to see how that continues to grow because it seems like uh you, you've valued positioning yourself for scale more than you valued instant profitability mm-hmm. um which is always the um which is the first step to to growing a, an ecosystem and mm-hmm. not just an organism you know right. what i mean that's kind of like the the saying that we have for franchising is like you're, if your business is an organism and you begin to build an ecosystem, well, now it has somewhere to grow. You know, mm-hmm. it has somewhere to live. It'll always grow to its habitat. You know what I mean? So that it's very, very interesting. I'm, I'm interested in to see how things develop and and how that brand continues to, to hold true to itself. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I think that's the secret sauce there is if you can outline exactly what the value of the brand is for the people that are partaking, and then you can stay true to that mm-hmm. as you grow from – you know, 50 to 500 franchise mm-hmm. locations between the six or eight of you, the mm-hmm. companies that are, that are involved, it, it, it's night and day, you know what I mean? What the value yeah. to that, that brand is. So it's very, very interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see how that turns out because I think it's going to be, um, a lot of good things. Um, let me ask you this, Absolutely. um, kind of the way that we always, uh, in the podcast here, if there's anybody that wants to bend your ear, wants to be a franchisee of yours, wants to, um, ask you about anything or propose something business wise to you, how yeah. do they get a hold of you? So several different ways, you know, you can find me on LinkedIn, very active there, um, you know, connect with me, send me a message. Um, of course, I'm on the other social media platforms, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, feel free to look me up. Uh, it's Casey Ridley um, on, on LinkedIn. It's C-A-S-E-Y, Ridley, R-I-D-L-E-Y. Um, so look me up there, um, but also, too, on our website. So, you know, thedesignery.com. Um, I, again, own, own a restaurant as well. It's called Cold Creek, North Georgia.com. Um, so I have to go check that out. You do. It's good food. It's really? a fun time. What kind of food? Uh, American bar food. Yeah, home, you know, burgers, wings. Yeah. You know, fun stuff. Uh, live music, trivia. You know, that kind of thing oh, really? going on. So it's a uh, it's a fun place to hang out with friends and and go have a good time. Nice out there in the carpet capital of the world. That's huh? right, man. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is insane how much manufacturing business goes on out there past. You know, past uh, a little north of seventy five, it's it's really nuts. Oh yeah, there's a lot out there, and uh, you know, after a hard day's work, they need a place to come relax and uh, drink true. a beer and, and hang out with some good good uh, friends. So that is true. Uh, well, that is unique, my friend. I look forward to seeing how your stuff grows. You know, it, it seems. Um, I guess maybe whenever you're growing the way that you're growing, everything seems like in its infancy because you're mm-hmm. looking so high up on the mountain, you know, like mm-hmm. no matter how big, ba- how, no matter how big the snowball gets, like it always feels like a small snowball compared to what it's going to be, I guess. Right. So, uh, it's really, really cool. And I, and I hope that there is a way that we can kind of participate in you guys success too, because we, we have some, uh, some leverage here with the, the brand of the podcast and we have some power behind what we do with, with some of the credit card processing stuff as well, as far as attracting mm-hmm. people that are competent business people as well. So maybe I I can uh, connect you to someone that that is a good fit for you as well in the future but that is it's just really Absolutely. cool it's really cool your, your story is really cool thank and you, i think you. the biggest thing that is really cool is that it's possible mm-hmm. right is like you can accumulate the skills that you need to begin your journey in business mm-hmm. 
if you don't, if you have not accumulated the skills that you need to start in business, you can start in business and you can, it, it will quickly show you what tools you need to add to your bag. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And here you are, you know, like we are literally from, we talked about it earlier before the podcast. I hate that you guys missed that, but like <laughs> I hated, oh, I hated OKM too. Like I did, I had the exact yeah. same experience with that. And, and here we are learning a lot of the same stuff and it's taken us two completely different ways because I wasn't built for the, we're not very corporate here at all. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're, we're very sales and scale oriented, you know, um, and we scale differently. Like the bread and butter of our business are these retail merchants. And then we have some basically technology solutions, you know, like Mm -hmm. um, CRM systems that we work with franchises or um, specific verticals that we, you know, get merchant merchants in bunches as well, you know, so we, we've kind of uh, renegotiated what that the name of that game is for us as well. But, you know, the, the thinking about scale and thinking about owning a big business, and pushing things where they need to go until things kind of fit in place is a skill in itself. So mm-hmm. um, I commend you for massaging things until they fit where they need to go because I know it's super, super difficult. Yeah, it, it definitely can be. You know, I, thank you for that. Um, I'll, I'll add in just a quick story too because sure. I feel like there's probably a lot of people that are, you know, in, in a similar boat to this. But, you know, you talked about kind of that, that leap of faith or, you know, that, that point of no return. Um, and just kind of doing it right mm-hmm. um, in business. And we see that all the time where people are stuck in these corporate corporate jobs and they just don't know which way to go, but they've always had this dream of entrepreneurship and they don't know what to do. And one of our franchisees specifically comes to mind. She had a great corporate job. She was very high up with her company, uh, made great money, and loved you know what she was doing. However, there was a piece always missing. And for her, it was, it was entrepreneurship. It was taking your own life in your own hands. And, uh, you know, people have those same things all the time and then they come across entrepreneurship and specifically franchising and then they realize, wow, this is a way to not quite be so scary. You're jumping into a net with a lot of people holding it versus jumping off a cliff of the unknown, right? And, uh, you know, so I think a lot of people probably are in a similar boat to where they're stuck in their job and don't really know a way out, but they wish there was a way out that they could do their own business and they don't know what to do. Um, franchising is is kind of a good option for those people. Yeah, absolutely. And you, um, like, the value of being a business owner, I think, is something that people misinterpret as well, um, mm-hmm. weirdly enough. It's like you can make all the money in the world and you can have all the power over people that you want as well. But, like, when you're, when you're using business as a vehicle to share something great with somebody mm-hmm. or change the experience of, like, the, the quality of life for yourself, mm-hmm. it it really, really renegotiates the value that you place on, you know, where you work and the interactions that you have in the workplace and things like that. So I would encourage you that as well. If you are one of those people that values those, um, the interaction and indispensability to your company and you want to create that culture for other people, franchising is a wonderful, wonderful model. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll also say this about franchising. Uh, There is no such thing as business in a box. I'm sure that you know this. Every single one of your franchises is different. Every single one of their markets Mm -hmm. is different. Um, Their, their, you know, their, their, mannerisms and the way that they interact with their customers is going to be different right. just because you you know out there may be listening and and don't feel like you're the prototypical franchise owner and it's not true you know, every, every everything is different everybody's finances are mm-hmm. different everyone's in a different place in life just like you and me were in a different yeah. place in life and it's led us to, to different places and they're you know in my mind they're both really really cool you know Absolutely. so um i commend you again um, not to pat you on the back too much. I don't want to make a shoulder sore, but um, <laughs> thank you for that. And then the last thing is is really um, that illusion to burn the ship. Yeah. What's it feel like? You know, when you committed and you made that acquisition and you're looking at the numbers and you're breaking down profit and loss statements mm-hmm. and it's dark and, you know, I always like picture that movie scene where people's like got the light out in their room and it's like one lamp on and they've got their glasses on mm-hmm. and like you're breaking down all of these spreadsheets and things like that and you feel overwhelmed like – What is it like just in the rawest sense of the word, you know, emotionally to make that leap into being your own business owner? Absolutely. Well, you know, I'll tell you, you know, when you light that match and you're ready to burn those ships, right? You know, day one, you're at the point of no return. You're scared to death. You're worried. You're stressed. You probably can't sleep. It's filled with anxiety and excitement altogether. And then you throw that match and you see it go up in flames. And, you know, by day two, you know, you look back and you're like, oh, crap, did I do the right thing, <laughs> right? Um, by day three, you forget there was ever a ship and you just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, typically it takes you those three days. And when you get to that third day, 
and you just realize the world that you just unlocked for yourself rather that's generational wealth for your family for your kids rather that's you know a better college for your kids rather that's you know giving back more to your community um, and just having those values at heart that you get to control and you get to you know drive that that ship forward um, you know it, it's it's an incredible feeling um, so you know day one day two scary stick it out day three you'll never look back yeah I feel that. Well, I appreciate that, my friend. It's uh, it's wonderful insight. Like I said, I think where you're at in your business is a really, really cool place because you're you're so you're agile. You're on your feet. You're doing different things every day, and you can go any direction you want. And it seems like you found the one that you want to go in. So thank you. We'll thank check you. back up. We'll bring you back on the podcast, and we'll kind of see how that direction's moving. Maybe teach some people some new things that you figured out. But um, I think what you're doing is awesome, man. More power to you. If there's anything yeah. else you want to say, the floor is yours. The platform is yours. But that's all I got. It's been burn the ship. Yeah. Thank you so much. I've appreciated being here and uh, I'll catch you on the next time. Cool. Thank you. Thanks.